Alright, what I have here is an old TV transformer. Probably from the 80s. Um, I was not happy with the output. I was told to get around 600 volts and I wasn't getting in more than 240. I think uh, I had a 12 volt winding at somewhat high current and I had a 120 volt for some reason then I had a 240, I think I had another 240. Um, I, didn't, I wasn't happy with it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this transformer and by looking at it this is the primary winding, this is the secondary winding and what I'll end up doing is uh, I cut out all those secondary windings here and then we'll wrap my own wire around it and hopefully I'll get a decent transformer out of that so um, I'm not going to show the progress but I'm going to just attempt it and then see and record what the uh, results are okay and just to show you what I've done I've uh, cut all the wires on each side and I've had both of them looking like this and I just pull them straight through so I've already got one done just about, I'm going to have to get these maybe some more wires in there, I'll get that off in a second but I'll just pull all these out through here like this, I just cut it with some side cutters alright here's that transformer um, I've just got all the wires off and I have 10 gauge wire I'm going to be trying to wrap around it and as of right now I have one turn on the secondary and I'm just going to see what I get little tiny sparks on one turn so I'll continue wrapping until I use all this wire and we'll see what we get then okay I've just um, finished wiring up as much as I could uh, I might be able to get one more wrap on it but I'm going to stop here for a little bit I'm going to see what I get done Got some current. I'll throw it through this copper wire. This is pretty thick. I'm gonna go get some uh, thin wire and see what I can do with it. And the wire that's right here is 18 gauge. So we'll see how it uh, goes through that. Let's switch switches here. Cuts through it. So I'm quite happy with the outcome of this. This is the very first transformer mod that I've ever done. Maybe I'll eventually put um, thicker wire on it. I want to try to figure out what the amps are on there. Okay, this is part of the secondary winding that I took out of it. Alright, how about half a paper clip? These connectors here get hot, they're made out of aluminum. I should really get thicker alligator clips and that won't be a problem. Alright, this is what I've done. I decided I needed to put the covers back on because I wanted to mount it to a base. And in order to do that, I needed to have like a way to drill through to the, let's say, a board. And um, these, this, the cover on here had holes in it, so I wanted to put it back. So I've just uh, run the wires. What I did is I evened it out a bit. Alright, on the transformer, I just have the two wires. I have the input, the output. 
everything seems good. I've got it screwed down to this uh, piece of wood here. I've got two washers underneath for a spacer so that I've got a little bit of a room between the board and the transformer so that no heat can really build up. And, you know, everything's going out here. I have the ground onto the base of the transformer. I'm thinking of ordering some uh, tough alligator clips. These are uh, melting on me. Okay, and I wanted to put a fuse in here, but I don't have any uh, fuse holders. So I have a few circuit boards from TVs. Here's one of them. Um, I took off the little clips that hold on the fuses. That's four of them. Two pairs. And I'm just going to put the fuse inside of here and then inside of the wires to here. And then tape it up so there's no exposing wires. But um, while I was at it, I decided, you know, since I had the circuit board out, I would take all the stuff that I wanted off of it. I was pretty surprised to see how many capacitors were actually on it. And just that one circuit board over there had all these capacitors on it. Um, I took apart even, an even older TV a while ago. The same one that that transformer came out of. There were a bunch of capacitors in there too, but they're big ones. Much bigger than this. They're like big cylinders. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken those um, clamps for the fuse. And I wired one directly onto the wire here. And then I made like a a little extension on this one and then it's on here and I'll give you a close up on that so I've just soldered it right under the wire same on this side okay so now what I've done is I've taken both these leads and I've put them on the wood I put tape here so that nothing conducts to the wood and inside of here this is just some uh, like a fruit cup or something um, if I get something better to cover this I will as of right now, this is the best thing I could find. Um, it's, it was in the recycling bin, so it's clear, so I can look inside here, see if the fuse has ever popped. And it really should never pop, because even if you short out the transformer with these two leads, it won't pop it. The only thing where it'll pop is if, let's say, the wiring you know, comes loose or something inside of here. But I decided not to put a switch on here, because it'd be too hard. So I just, um, I'm just i going to use my power strip whenever I use this. So this is just a test, um, before I go any further. Um, I'm going to test it out. So, this is going to be off right now. Turn it on. Okay. Now, I'll try it out. So, I'll take a uh, high res photo of it so that. It'll be a little clear on the video. Cool thing to burn with these is uh, pencil lead. What I have here is um, 0.07 millimeter, I think it is, lead. And um, you can heat it up till it's glowing. And the less you have, the brighter it'll get. It can get pretty bright and it won't even pop. Gotta give you a light for a little bit. So right now it's like a needle. It's getting thinner and thinner at the point. It's providing really bright light now. It's like a 60 watt light bulb. Well, so here's the finished product. I just added this clamp on here. Um, it keeps this in place. And these, it just guides it so that I don't pull it out of here. If you do this, you want to be careful that you don't get the threads in the insulation, or else you're going to cut it open and then ground it to the wood, which is 120 volts shouldn't go through wood, um, unless it's wet, of course. So all these are good. I haven't cut any insulation. I've already checked that. These are that's why I'm using washers here, because the threads are actually over here, and the washers was keeping it down. So uh, yeah, this is grounded. Um, I guess you'd always want to make sure that your uh, wiring in your house is correct before you actually do anything with it. The grounding is normally correct. It's reverse polarity that I commonly see. But I tested the ground um, from here. It made it all the way around the transformer, so this is grounded. Alright, here's a demo um, of the bolts that it has showing that it's not very many. 
here I have a flashlight, and you know, high amps and everything. You can, uh, some nice sparks out of it. There's nine LEDs in here, and I think this is about one bolt. I'm not too sure on that yet. I'm gonna gotta get a good multimeter in here. Down inside of here, you can see how uh, there's little contacts in there for the bulbs. You just stick this in here. The LED will light up. See, I just touch to the side. But this is on puts in our spot. You'll see that the LEDs light up just fine. What you will notice is that LEDs are running are normally run on DC because they're diodes inside there. They'll only light up if you have it one way, um, one direction. They will run on AC because AC fluctuates between the two. So right now it's flashing at 60 hertz, on and off. And sometimes the camera picks it up as flashing and it's staying on right now. See, I can see the camera. It's thinking it's flashing right now. It's not. To me, it appears that it's never even turned off. Let's see if I can get it to do it again. I don't know why it does it sometimes. See, there it goes. It looks like it's flashing, but it's not. It's just running at 60 hertz. If I put diodes and a capacitor on here, it would run just fine. 